afternoon because, well, I have trouble with Facebook. <laughs> anyway, I'm the owner of C-Square Farm. I'm a partner in Excel Star Sport Horses. Um, I'd like to encourage all of you to watch Training Tip Tuesday and let us know um, where you are watching from and any questions you might have. This is the beautiful Queen Maeve, or Maeve as she's known to her friends. Um, she has a very long show name, um, Briar Hill Excel Star Take Two. Um, we love her. She's doing the Modified Championships this weekend and then the Young Event Horse Five-Year-Old Championships. Anyway, today Madeline Gibbs, Hello. head groom, is going to talk to you about clipping the do's, the don'ts. I'm going to take over the camera um, and get behind the camera so if there are any questions, you guys can let us know. We'd also like to encourage you guys to um, like our business page, Courtney Cooper C Square Farm, so you can get more updates. Our Instagram, which is Courtney Cooper or C Square Farm or Excel Star Sport Horses, where you can get, again, more updates and information about what's going on, the horses that are coming in, etc. But for now, we're going to go to Madeline and Maeve and Clipping and any questions you might have. So I'm going to take the camera back. Okay, Madeline. Okay, so to start off, I'm used to being behind the camera, so Courtney kind of put me in the spotlight today, so she might have to help me along a bit. Um, but clipping. Clipping, as we know, is sometimes a pain to do, especially if you stay as busy as we do. Um, it can take a little while, but when you get good at it, uh, you can get a little bit faster. Um, so, as the fall is approaching, winter is approaching, fall's kind of already here, the horses are getting fuzzy right at the same time that we have some of our biggest events of the year. It's very ideal. So, you, I kind of listed, oh, do we really have a... No, we don't have a question. We just have Maeve making faces. Oh, yeah. Maeve's uh, very grumpy. She's been standing here for quite a while, so she's probably not going to love this. Um, but I've broken down clipping into a couple sections. So our first one is, is yes, I have a whiteboard behind me, so if you see me glancing down, that's what I'm looking at. Um, our first one is prep work. Um, and for me, prep work starts well before the actual clip happens. Um, first part of prep work is a good grooming routine. So all the horses here, before rides, after rides, get a super good curry. We have a horse in the background going to town. Um, super good curry to bring up all the natural oils, really get the coat really nice and shiny, really moisturized. Um, and then after their workout, our bathing routine's pretty specific too. Hose the horses down, curry all the sweat off, and then hose them again. Um, for success when you actually start clipping. So, and then day of or day before routine is a really, really good bubble bath. Um, so may I Hold on. Oh, oh no, no, we... We went away, and now we come back, back again. Are we okay? Yep, we're good. Okay, so Maeve had her bubble bath this morning. Our working students there around would tell you I have a very specific bubble bath routine. I get a little grumpy when they don't follow it because I don't like clipping dirty horses, and you'll find out why. Um, so a really good bubble bath. Honestly, I just use Dawn. Uh, it gets everything really nice and clean if you have something you'd prefer. Go for it as long as there is no dirt, dander, anything left in the hair. You want a really good solid base to work with. Next thing is, and this is an optional thing, um, but especially if maybe you're clipping uh, right before an event, which is the most recommended, but sometimes it's what you have to do, is hot toweling with a little bit of light oil um, can really help buff any last bits of grime out of the coat conditions the coat really well and makes your clippers run a lot smoother um, so you're probably going to get a better a better run is that baby oil you use so there's a lot of different options for oil baby oil i find to be a little bit too slow a little bit too slick for the coat i try to avoid it on the coat um shapely's makes a really good or shapley's however you say it makes a really really good light oil I think it's like the number one light oil. A um, little bit of that diluted in a five gallon bucket of hot water, as hot as you can stand it. Um, dunk your towel, wring it out, rub it over the coat and really buff it in. Really brings out a good shine, really helps condition the coat. But I would avoid baby oil on the coat at all costs. Um, 
but any other like light oils that you could buy at the store will work too. So that's kind of the before clip routine that we like to follow. So the next part of your clipping routine is figuring out what tools you want to use. So if you're new to clipping, you may be a little bit overwhelmed with all of the options for clippers. I know I was when I first started, but I have some clippers back here. We can creep behind the angle. Well, you can just bring them to us. Okay, yeah. I don't really want to get near That's grumpy, fair. grumpy <laughs> girl, <laughs> grumpy girl's back end. So I really prefer a clipper that is lightweight and easy to handle. Um, some of the older style clippers, you've maybe seen them, are monstrous. They're like this big. I have a pair that are older than than my Probably older than Madeline. Me. Um, we joke about that all the time. It's fine. Uh, I think if a clipper is too heavy or too noisy, you're just not going to have a good time using it. Clipping takes a while. You want to be comfortable with the tools that you're using. Um, I really prefer the Andes Clippers. This is the Ultra Edge Special Edition. They make another one, the Two Speed, um, which people have probably seen a lot of. It's the dark maroon uh, clippers. I think those work really, really well. Something I love about them is, and a lot of clippers now have this feature, is easy on and off. And I've been clipping this morning, so you can see it's a bit dirty. I love being able to just pop the blades in and out. I don't want to have to be fiddling around with it when I'm trying to get a horse done. Um, these are great for body. You can use these on the legs. They're a little bit big, but you can use them on the legs and the face if the horse will tolerate it. Um, I think the Andes makes a really good clipper. They last a really long time and they're just really, I just really like them. Um, second is a much smaller set of clippers. These are by Wall. These are cordless, also very, very light, very, very quiet. Um, they don't make a lot of noise, so the horses tend to really enjoy them. Um, and then this clipper has a feature where you can control how um, short or long, can you see that? How short or long the blade is. I don't know if you can even see that in there. There's a little, she's moving a little There's thing a little a, button right on the bottom. There. there you go. Um, really good for face and legs ears, everything like that. Um, you can get it all the way down to a 40 blade, which is a surgical blade, surgical blade, um, which is my preference for doing the inside of the ears. Um, really good for getting in the small grooves on the legs, which this can be a little bit harder with this wide blade. Um, for the main body, we prefer to use the T84 blade. This is a really common blade. If you don't or can't find an 84, um, a 10 blade on the body can work as well. I just like the 84 I have to turn off her alarms. That's usually my job. All right, so I'm gonna set these down. And you wanna make sure that you have an extension cord so you can keep the cord away from their feet and not have to worry about working so close to them if you're working on a short sort of cord. Yes, and then another thing is is a place with good light so we prefer to clip over here because we can turn these lights on the horses don't have a ton of room to wiggle around maybe not Maeve but a um, place with good light a good workspace a clean area to work in you don't want a bunch of clutter or anything getting in your way um, okay and then a good brush for brushing away all the hairs that you're about to clip on Okay, right, so now that we have our tools and our prep work done, it's actually time to start clipping. Um, as you can see, I've already done just about half of Maeve. There's a little bit of her legs to clean up, everything like that. Her head is yet to be done. Um, but I kind of just been working away at it this morning. So we have the outside of her legs done, need to do the inside. She's done a really nice job. I will say she's a bit grumpy, but she's actually one of the best Irish horses we have to clip. I was about to say, she's has, she stood very well for me this morning. Um, so let's talk about clipping. Let's go to the other side. Yes, our hairy side. Our hairy side, and we'll look at clipping. So she doesn't look like she has a whole lot of coat, but being Irish, she does. It's very, do it's very dense. So tell us about clipping. Like, how do you start? Where do you start? Like if you, if you don't know the horse, what do you do? So like you said, Maeve's a really good girl. Um, but if you 
didn't know the horse, you would want to make sure first and foremost that they're going to be okay with these clippers. You can see her ear already turning back to listen to me. She knows what these are. She's comfortable with these. One I did yesterday, I turned them on and it was a no-go, okay? And I'm really glad I checked before I went straight into clipping or that wouldn't have been a very positive experience for either of us. So first things first. So what do you do in that situation? Drugs, 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 drugs. Okay, so, so I don't want to get hurt. We want to make it a positive experience for our horses. So if it comes to that situation, a little bit of sedation goes a long way. Um, you know, maybe eventually you can wean them off of sedation, um, but just for their safety and mine, a still horse during a clip job is a safe horse during a clip job, and nine times out of ten, your clip's going to come out way, way better because they're standing still than it would if they were moving around and, and acting grumpy like someone we know. Um, anyway, so let's go to clipping. Okay. So I always start off, even though they're clean, just brushing the coat down, removing any uh, like dust or anything that has settled on the coat as we've been standing around here. And I work in small sections. Oh, do you have a question already? No, we're, uh, I'd love to get some questions. So all of you watching, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. But let's keep going. Okay. Um, so I like to work in sections. It's a little overwhelming when you're looking at a horse trying to figure out where to start. Um, so I want to start off in the easiest sections, which I think are um, like the side and the neck. Um, that's where I personally like to start. And when we clip, we always work against the direction of the hair. Okay, don't work with the hair. It will not look good. It will not come out right. So just because I know we're good to go, I'm going to go ahead and do my first pass. I kind of like to start middle of the belly and I just slowly work my way up the neck and then I start from the tail and I finish off the hind quarters. So keeping a little bit of pressure but not digging into the skin obviously, you're just going to make your first pass nice and easy gets a little bit lumpy where the shoulders are but there we go hardest parts done by now you've committed so you have to clip the rest of them okay so and now do you ever do not a full clip or do you do you can keep clipping and talking okay. um yeah so that was something i was going to cover is what kind of clip do you choose for your horse why we choose a full body clip and how to know, you know, what you want to do. So we choose to do a full body clip because I would like to think of these horses as marathon runners, okay? You don't want to wear a whole bunch of clothes to run a marathon. You're going to get way too hot and way too tired. Now, if we were leisurely going to the store, yeah, maybe you'd put a jacket on, a sweatshirt, some sweatpants, something like that. So when you have a marathon runner horse, they're not going to want all these layers of clothes on them. So we take that off to keep them cool and comfortable when they're working. Also to ensure that when it starts to get really cold, even when they get sweaty, they aren't going to get chills or anything because we can't get all the sweat out of their long hair. Now if you have a horse who maybe is older, maybe has a metabolic condition, has a hard time um, controlling their hair growth. Maybe you don't need to take it all off, but you'd like to keep them a little bit cooler. Um, you could do maybe a bib clip or a trace clip, which really just focuses on their chest and their stomachs, um, the hottest parts of the horse. Another thing that you have to consider is, do you have the means to take care of a horse with a full body clip or any clip for that matter? So maybe you keep your horse at a self-care facility or a place that doesn't offer blanketing. Um, do you have the means to go out and layer blankets or take blankets off during the day, change blankets to something lighter or something heavier? Um, that's a big commitment. When you start clipping your horse, you have to tell them that you're going to take care of them. They're not going to let them get cold or you're not going to let them go all day with layers and layers of blankets on. So, for us, we're really lucky we have the ability 
to come in, pull blankets off, add blankets as we need to. So a full body clip works out really well for us and we don't have to worry too much about that. But, let's see. So if you'll notice, I've been overlapping um, my line just a little bit just to make sure that I'm actually getting all of the hair. You want to be able to clip in as few passes as possible to avoid lines. Now, if you've never clipped before and you clip and you leave a lot of lines, don't worry about it. Give it a, like a week or two. They're going to even out. Um, it's not quite as scary as it seems. You didn't ruin your horse. It's just hair and it grows back. So now that I've clipped kind of the main belly, I like to come up here and work along the back. And then I do one stripe up here from the flank. Okay, so now you have this whole triangle. That's kind of your first section. That's how I like to work. Um, Always, though, figuring out what is most comfortable for you and your horse. Some of them are going to be more sensitive in certain areas than others. Um, and that just takes trial and error to figure out. Like, be mindful of their body language and what they're telling you. Um, horses are obviously very vocal. They tell you exactly what they like and what they don't. Um, so keeping aware of those things as you clip is going to make your life a lot easier. So we're kind of finishing up this first section here. Now we also have the ability if it today's actually a kind of here we go. Sorry. Back. I, I'm back. I hit the alarm. Hopefully it's off now. Uh, anyway, but it's uh, sort of a coolish day here in the mid Atlantic, a little humid. Um, but if need be, you can see there's a fan in the back that we can turn and put that on her if we need. And um, we also do spray them before we start with fly spray because unfortunately it is also fly season here. So they go out in fly gear and then at night they'll have a sheet on them if they're clipped. So we have a question. Oh, what's our first question? Our question is how long does it take for a typical full body clip? How long do you give yourself, Madeline? Um, I actually try not to put a time limit on it if I don't have to. So I think the best way to get a good clip is to take your time and be patient. Um, so the horses tell me how long they want to be clipped. Okay, so typically it takes me um, about two and a half, maybe three hours to do a full body clip if I'm really taking my time and going slow. Um, I think I did her other half this morning in maybe about 35, 40 minutes. So if I can focus in and really work at it, two hours if I'm pushing it. Um, but I like to give myself about three hours. That seems like a good amount of time. But like I said, we let the horses tell us how long they want to be clipped for. And if they're really not vibing with it that day, we don't push it. Um, but give yourself plenty of time, probably more time than you need. That way you can go and do it slowly and do it the right way. Because a rushed clip job is never a good clip job. How about legs? Let's talk about legs. What do you do with legs? So with legs, I would go, I'm going to go back to my smaller clippers. Like I said, Maeve will let me clip her legs with uh, these bigger ones, but I always like to have my small ones on hand. Um, I start down at the very bottom and I just go one pass at a time up the leg. Um, we're stomping a little bit. Yep. Started being broken this week, and they're very, very mouthy. And vocal. <laughs> yes. We'll, nice we'll, we'll show those two guys later. Yeah. 
So we have another question. Oh, already, okay. So we like having questions, so that's great. Yes. So I usually see the saddle area left unclipped. Why do you clip it? Um, preference more than anything. a teeny tiny bit of hair. I don't really think it makes a huge difference. Um, some people say it's more comfortable for the horses. It gives them extra padding. It protects their skin on their back. I don't find it to be super necessary. But if you prefer the look of it, the aesthetic appeal of it, go ahead and leave a spot. I would encourage you though. I don't know why he's rolling the lawn right outside of the... <laughs> um, to, use, to use chalk and to draw out, like trace a line, maybe use your half pad or something to trace um, that area because it looks really dumb if you have one side that's really big and one side that's really small or something like that. But I don't find it to be necessary. I find it to be more of an aesthetic choice than anything. It looks good in pictures if you're clipping as a profession. You know, people like the way it looks. And it looks nice. Now, do you clip designs on the horses? So, I'm a very artistic person. I am not when it comes to this. I could maybe draw a heart, but I don't think that that would be a very good idea. Um, no, I am very much a classic full body clip is the way to go. I'm not a hearts and flowers and rainbows kind of girl. She so is in real life though. I'm really not. Don't let me <laughs> fool you. I don't even like hugs. Okay. But no, I, I tend to prefer just a classic clean look. I don't like all the other stuff. Not to say that you shouldn't do that. because if now, you want to, now, when would you leave the legs? what is called a hunter clip um so maybe on a horse that isn't working quite as much as these guys are maybe isn't showing um or maybe lives outside and you want their legs to have a little bit of extra protection um so you could do a hunter clip where you leave the legs and then typically in a hunter clip you would also leave the saddle patch um, and when you do that the leg kind of has a natural contour here. You can see this kind of triangle that runs because of the muscle. You don't want to clip above that, or sorry, you want to clip above that, nothing below that. Same thing on the back leg, there is kind of a natural sloping line that you want to follow. Anything below that, you might as well clip the rest of it off because you've messed it up. If you leave anything above that, once again, just go ahead and go in and fix it. Use the no one's gonna controls. no one's gonna judge you on your clip job. Oh no, no one is ever going to judge you on your clip job ever. This thing, my first couple clip jobs were hack jobs, if anything. My horse looks like they got into fights with lawnmowers. So practice, practice, practice makes perfect. The only way you get better is by practicing. By practicing. If you're wondering, like, how do I get practice? My horse doesn't grow hair that fast. There are plenty of lesson programs, therapy programs that maybe need their horses clipped, uh, but there's so many horses that they can't afford to pay full price or, um, or a price for a professional, or maybe they don't have the time. Um, that's always a great option, reaching out to lesson programs saying, hey, um, I'm wanting to practice my clipping. Do you guys have any lesson horses that need to be clipped or anything like that? That's a really, uh, really great way to do it. Help some people out. You get some practice. Maybe make a little extra cash. But practice, practice, practice makes perfect. So how do you do an elbow? An elbow, okay. Because elbows so, are tough. I find el elbows to be the elbows really, are very tough. Really tough. They're very wrinkly. The skin is very loose. Um, my favorite option is when you have some help, have someone hold the front leg forward so you can really get in there and get all the grooves. But if you don't have that or you don't know how to do it yourself, just pulling the skin nice and taut and clipping in small sections. 
You don't want to catch any of this skin in your clipper. Your horse will not be happy with you. Especially back here. This bone in here is called the ulna. A bunch of skin gets really wrinkly right in here. Same thing. Pull the skin as taut as you can. Work in small sections. Sometimes you just got to kind of keep moving it around until you can get it all. Super job. Okay. Well, let's talk about the neck. How do you cut in the neck? Okay, well, before we get to the neck, I'm actually gonna change out my blades really quick. This blade is getting very hot. Um, so, if it's too hot for your skin, it's too hot for theirs. So I like to switch out my blades. Um, they also make a cooling spray. While I switch my blades out, I take a second to kind of clean my clippers out. set goes on super easy and now you have a nice cool blade to work with okay so with the, we have one very important thing that we have to worry about and that is the lovely mane um, if you have a horse that has a really thick or really long mane it may be better for you to maybe band the mane up kind of get it out of the way for you but I think hers is good enough to kind of just flip it on over. Right here in the middle of the neck we have a whorl. If you don't know what a whorl is, that's when the hair kind of grows in a circular pattern. So we have that to avoid. So how do you deal with that? Well, the best way to deal with that is to just change the direction of your clipper as you're working. And then right here where the mane starts to grow, the hair is actually growing straight up. So the neck can be a little bit of a pain to deal with. Oh, maybe. So what I like to do is I like to line the mane out first and just get it out of the way. So I come up here, I make sure I'm holding the mane down on the other side nice and flat. I don't want to clip any of her mane off. Come right up here to the edge. And I'm just going to work a small line down. Okay, I'm just taking a little bit off there. So I would do that all the way up the neck. It needs to be pulled. Then I can go in. I don't have to worry about getting the mane or anything. And because the hair grows in all different directions, I don't like to do super long passes on the neck because you're going to have to go back anyways. Sure, I can do whatever you want to do. Just switch places, that way you guys can actually see. So then here at the whirl, we have to work backwards. Same thing, flip the main, or flip up at the main, straight down. Cool. So how often will you clip um, as often as necessary. So if the horses tend or are growing hair back pretty quickly, um, you know, it's kind of like a farrier. There's not a one size fits all. Um, if I notice the horse is starting to get a little bit more sweaty than I'd like them to during their rides, or they're holding on to their coat a little bit more than I'd like, I'll go ahead and body clip them again really up to your discretion how much hair you want them to have. So, 
kind of getting near the face if you want to. Maybe All right, let's talk face. about the face. Well, before we go to the face, because we've talked about legs, legs, and we've talked about the body, yep. we've talked about the elbows, mm -hmm. the belly you just have to be careful on. Yeah. So, let's talk about the stifle area yes. and the tail, and then we'll go to the head. Do the head last. So moving back here. So, we'll start up here at the tail. So, oh, maybe it's giving us some very angry looks. So, first thing we want is we want our horse to be standing as square as possible or close to square as possible. Which she's not. Which she is not. We might need to adjust her a little bit. Thanks, Maeve. She said further away. Oh, good, oh girl. good girl. Okay, so the best way to frame a perfectly pulled tail, which let's ignore this right now, we haven't gotten to that yet, is by a nice little triangle right up here. Now you want the triangle, and just be cautious when you're back here, you are right behind them, so make sure you're watching their body language. The mower's so loud. So, we're gonna make a nice triangle right down the sides. Start it a little bit bigger than you think you're gonna want it, okay? You don't wanna cut it too small. And you're just gonna follow the natural angle of the tail. Okay, so I made it a little small on this side because I'm not quite in the middle. I'm going to come in, even it up a little bit, clean up my lines. What do you think? That's not too shabby, I don't not think. Not too shabby for doing it kind of off center. Okay. All right, okay. well, let's talk about. And then she would come back, and you see on this side how she, le she left a bit. Haven't finished her full hind in yet. I'd usually finish that as I'm working on the insides of the hind legs, kind of following that all the way up. You can see the hair's a lot thinner back here, a lot easier to clip. But. Why don't we go ahead to the stifle? Yeah. All right. Over. Notice my nails have not been manicured and painted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the stifle is a little bit like the elbow in the fact that it's just very awkward to clip. It's kind of hard to clip. Um, it's got a lot of divots, a lot of wrinkles um, that you kind of have to work around. So with the stifle, the area around the flank where the hair is growing on all different directions. The easiest thing is just take your time. Don't try to make really big long passes. Just getting a little close to me. Um, don't try to make big long passes. It's probably not going to get all the hair. Um, so you're better off just kind of working through it in small sections. Does anybody have any questions, anything else they want us to cover before we go to the head? After we get through the stifle? Probably need to do a training tip Tuesday on how we dress them. Probably. Blankets and better. sheets. Anyone would be interested in doing that? One of my original working students, Chloe Gaines, who I think is watching, is probably the best blanket folder I ever had. Well, you haven't seen me full blankets yet. Chloe, it's on. All right, so let's look at the stifle. So with all this whirl, what do you do with that? Okay, so, oh, we're moving again. <laughs> like I said, Mae's been standing here for a while and she's been really patient so far, so I can't blame her. Okay, so, kind of, hard to describe. As I clip up, because as you can see, the hair is growing up here, and then it curves outwards and back down. So I clip up, and as I'm clipping, I angle back down. Take all that off. And this is 
is why I think it's really important to have clippers that you're comfortable handling. Um, if you don't feel like you can manipulate the clipper the way that you want to, it's probably too big and you need to find something a little bit easier for you to work with. So that's that side done. Okay. So you would just duplicate that on the other side. Yeah, exactly. Just the same mirror image. Right. So do you want, are you ready to go? I think we should okay. go to the head. Thank now, you. Chloe has a question. Can you show us the trim line if someone decided to leave the head and didn't want to clip them? The yeah, Chloe's one of those girls. She tried clipping the head. It was a bad. It just looked like it just looked like he got into the lawnmower. Oh, we've all been there. Okay. <laughs> and you can't have the strawberry. Look, <laughs> look like, like yeah. <laughs> look at like I mean, the pickle eating strawberry. Where you do half the cheek. Oh, I like the half the cheek thing. You like the half the cheek thing, Courtney? Yeah, I like the half the cheek. Says she doesn't. So I'm gonna do that to her. Like I say, you can either follow the jawline, and you can see the line that goes all the way down. You can follow that if you want, or you can kind of use your halter. Well, we have another question before we start. Uh, what precautions should you take when you clip the face? And I will also say before we get going too far, uh, the FEI has made it um, punishable by elimination if you take off eyelashes or nose hair. So all of our n noses are very furry, as you can whiskery. see, and whiskery. So they all get their nose hair so they can peel things when they go bump in the night. Um, so precautions for faces. Okay, so I mean, as you can tell, we have some pretty important pieces up here on the face. Um, biggest thing is keeping their eyes protected. You do not ever, ever, ever want to get a clipper to the eye. So um, what I would always like to do is maybe take one hand and cover the eye. So if my other hand were to slip or I were to fumble or anything, that our beautiful forelock. We don't want to go chopping any of that off. So making sure that we're pulling it nice and out of the way, just like we did when, <laughs> when we're doing the mane. Um, we want to keep those areas protected. The skin down here on the muzzle is a little bit thinner, okay? So same thing, you want to make sure you're not getting any of their skin caught up in your clippers. Um, it's really easy to nick these areas. And the ears is probably the hardest part for most horses. Their ears are very sensitive, clippers are very loud, they vibrate a lot. We do clip the inside of our horse's ears. Um, you don't have to. You can leave them if you want, um, but ours go out wearing fly protection. I tell you what, why don't we actually not do that because we don't have someone to give us a hand. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this, guys, is how we clip out our horses. Now, Maeve is um, a very good girl, and like I said, she has been out here probably for a couple hours now yeah. um, being clipped and everything, and so um, you're going to get lots of peppermints for that. 
Um, but if you have more questions about clipping or questions for Madeline, feel free to message us. While we have the two-year-olds in, let's go meet the two-year-olds. Let's, let's do a little, little, little two-year-old devils. A two-year-old two tour. A two-year-old tour. And then, well, of course, we'll see the baby because everybody loves the baby. The two year old corner. Let's see who this one is. So, who is this? I can't remember any of the two year olds. <laughs> okay, this is Ryan. And Ryan is Joy's daughter uh, by, by Capone or Capone. I don't know however, how to pronounce it. So, she's a very pretty girl, just like her mama. And then we have Rory. And Rory looks actually quite like a yearling we have right now. Uh, but Rory is, oh, my husband's going to kill me. But I think Rory is by Believe in the Stars, or out of Believe in the Stars, by um, A Star by Far. And um, he's actually quite a large two-year-old. He is very big. Um, but a very sweet boy. Neil has done his job that all of the two-year-olds are quite social. And then this little girl is Mercy. And some of you might remember Mercy. Um, Mercy was actually Grace's foal. And there's Grace with her baby. Um, we tried to rehab Grace and um, she needed a year. And so um, Mercy was the product of that year. And she uh, is saying hello to her little brother. And so we're going to say hello to her little brother. <laughs> Who has a name, actually? This is Adam with a T. A T O M. <laughs> um, so that's his name, little Adam. And as you can see, he's grown into quite, quite a good-looking little fellow. Very attractive. Though. That would be Ryan screaming. Anyway, so that's us for Training Tip Tuesday. We hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you, Madeline, so much for all of your help. And um, please let us know if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions, as always, uh, for next week for Training Tip Tuesday. We really appreciate you watching. Thanks very much. Bye.